Our next speaker will be Professor Unjun Kim. Professor Kim is the director of the Center for Synaptic Brain Dysfunctions at the Institute for Basic Science at the Korean Advanced, uh, Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, KAIST. He's interested in the biology of neural synapses and their role in psychiatric disorders. The topic of his presentation today will be male-female differences in mouse models of autism spectrum disorders. Please welcome Professor Kim. Okay, thanks very much for uh, giving me an opportunity to present my uh, uh, recent data uh, with you today. This is a very important um, event and um, I'd like to support this event and, and future uh, directions uh, from the tip of my heart. All right. So autism spectrum disorder, or ASD, uh, represents a neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by two main uh, core symptoms. One is a social deficit, another is a repetitive behavior. ASD uh, also comes with uh, multiple comorbidities, including intellectual disability, ADHD-like hyperactivity, anxiety, epilepsy, and sensory abnormalities. The prevalence rate at the moment is 2.8%, which means one out of 36 people. And it seems that uh, the prevalence rate has been increasing, actually almost doubling every 10 years for the last 20 years or so. The reasons are not uh, clear, but it could be <coughs> uh, an increase in, in increased awareness of the disease or, or diag diagnostic shifts or, or who knows, maybe it's a modern society and tough environment. And as Nero mentioned, now ASD is more common, four to five times more common in males than in females. Again, the reason is not clear. And ASD is considered to be a highly genetic disorder with uh, more than 1,000 uh, known ASD risk genes. And treatment is minimal. The, the medications shown here, uh, antipsychotics, and they're only useful for irritation associated with ASD. And then there is no FDA approved medications in, in any countries in the whole world. So that's the reason why we and many other laboratories uh, are working on uh, mechanisms underlying ASD. So here you're looking at the list of suggested molecular mechanisms. Uh, they talk about neurotransmitters, uh, neuromodulators, neuropeptides, glutamate receptors and GABA receptors, transporters, and neuronal excitability, and signaling mechanisms, and mitochondria and ribosome, also chromatin and splicing transcription, Extracellular matrix, a gut microbiota, immune and infection and nutrients. So, sorry about um, talking about too many mechanisms, but this is the, the, the current situation. They are all uh, equally uh, attractive, in my opinion. But my lab has been focusing on NMD receptor dysfunction hypothesis. So probably uh, many of you agree that uh, there is a normal range in the function of NMD receptor in the brain. And some early studies have found that limited NMD receptor function actually can cause ASD-like phenotypes in animal models, including mice. And soon, uh, the researchers found that excessive NMD receptor function can also cause uh, trouble uh, in animal models. And for the last 10 years or so, uh, the laboratories, other than my own, uh, have reported uh, results that support the idea of limited uh, NMD receptor function causes uh, ASD. So my own lab has also generated and characterized many mouse lines. And the ones shown in the left-hand side in green uh, seems to support the NMD receptor dysfunction hypothesis. However, uh, the mouse lines on the second line, well, uh, seems to, did not support the NMD receptor dysfunction hypothesis yet. The reason why I'm uh, saying not yet, 
uh, is because the picture that we uh, uh, encountered was actually very different from the picture that we originally uh, imagined. This is one example. So here you're looking at uh, uh, different uh, mouse lines for the same gene carrying uh, different mutations. And in Shanks 3 area, there are so many uh, different mutations. And quite surprisingly, these individual mouse lines show very distinct behavior or phenotypes as if they're carrying uh, mutations of different genes, not the different mutations of the, of the same gene. Another um, surprise was that um, these factors, like mouse sex and age and gene deletion dosage, heterozygosity or homozygosity, and also genetic background had huge impact on the phenotypes. So this is uh, one example. So we've been studying a protein called the CHD8, which is a chromatin remodeler, regulating a chromatin conformation and gene expression. And then um, this uh, CHD gene is frequently mutated in many ASD uh, cases. And then uh, there is a very strong uh, male-female ratio in uh, autistic individuals. And then although uh, this chromatin remodeler plays an important role during embryonic development, it seems to have a huge impact on synaptic uh, and also circuit functions of the brain. So among many uh, CHD mutations, we chose this particular mutation causing a truncation um, in, in, in the C-terminal region of the protein, published about 10 years ago. And, and many uh, autistic individuals with the CHD mutations, they did show microcephaly, increased brain size. So we looked at uh, brain volumes in males and females. And overall, uh, uh, volume were not altered in either in males or female mice. However, uh, if you take a look at the female results, and you can see uh, there are some local um, in increases in the female. We looked at the behavior, and we found that uh, male uh, pups, they emit increased numbers of uh, ultrasonic vocalizations, or USV. This is a type of uh, social communication in rodents, uh, when they're separated from their mothers. However, this behavior was not uh, observed. In, in females. So this is a clear male uh, preponderant behavior. Also, when you measure the latency to first call of USV when they're separated from their mothers, and the male uh, mice were quicker in emitting uh, USB calls. Also, uh, um, male mutant uh, mice spend more time with uh, reunited mothers when they separated from their mothers for about 30 minutes uh, uh, allowed to reunite with mothers. But this kind of a behavior was not observed in females. And also uh, male mutant mice, they showed increased self-grooming, uh, whereas female mice didn't show such behavior. So the behavior really is very clear that male mice Pops and juveniles and adults, they show male preponderant, preponderant behaviors. So what are the mechanisms? Uh, to this end, uh, we measured uh, neuronal activity by C4 sustaining on the baseline and also mother separation conditions. This is the result from male mice and on the uh, baseline condition without mother separation. And you, we don't really see uh, any differences in the neuronal activity. Um, in, in, the, in multiple brain areas. But when uh, upon mother uh, separation, we could see uh, most, uh, several brain regions that show increased neuronal activity. However, this is the data from female uh, mice. And uh, on the baseline condition, we could see uh, actually a decrease in neuronal activity in several brain regions. Uh, upon mother separation, somehow this, the decrease in neural activity become normalized. 
So uh, we obtained a similar results from other brain sections. So it seems that uh, model separation stress seems to be causing similar increases in uh, neuron activity in both males and females. But because they have a uh, different baseline levels of neuron activity, the end point seems to be different in males and females. So to better understand the molecular mechanism and synaptic mechanisms, uh, we measured uh, excitatory and inhibitory synaptic transmission. And then surprisingly, there were no uh, changes whatsoever in the excitatory synaptic transmission. But when you measured inhibitory uh, synaptic transmission, it was decreased in males, but increased in females. So there, there seems to be a distinct changes in males and females that causes differential changes in synaptic excitation and inhibition ratios. We also measured the neuronal firing in, in a living mouse, live mouse, and then we saw uh, a similar increase in the neuron firing in both males and females. But this increase in the male was specific to excitatory neuron firing, but um, female increase was specific to inhibitory uh, neuron firing, suggesting that, again, there are distinct changes in neuron firing, firing in males and in females. So what is going on? So this is a current uh, hypothesis. As you know, the uh, uh, principal neurons are usually um, inhibited by GABAergic neurons. Uh, but in males, uh, the uh, GABAergic neuronal activity is low, and so the release of an inhibitory neurotransmitter is weak, and open mother separation, which is generally induced, increase in neural activity. And, and this uh, mother separation stress causes an excessive increase in neuronal excitation. Whereas in females, uh, the GABA neuron activity is high under baseline conditions and upon mother separation. And this uh, GABA urge contribution seems to be limiting excessive uh, uh, neuron excitation of the postsynaptic neuron. So what is the molecular mechanisms? So we've tried <coughs> transcriptomic analysis at different postnatal stages. At juvenile stages, we found a very interesting increase in, in the uh, amount of transcripts that is specific to females. So when we do gene ontology analysis, we found uh, terms related with uh, 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 extracellular uh, vesicles. Extracellular vesicles are, sorry, small um, uh, lipid droplets that are uh, released uh, from, the, from a cell, and they contain mRNAs and proteins. And these uh, vesicles are used to, uh, for the communication between uh, different cells in the brain. We also uh, narrowed down the transcription analysis down to the hippocampus. And this time, we found the female-specific uh, increases in, 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 in the genes uh, associated with uh, extracellular matrix which are the molecules that are released uh, from uh, brain cells, and they often uh, are often concentrated in the synapse areas that regulate synaptic structure and function. So it's possible that maybe these uh, female uh, protective effects that we uh, observed uh, could be uh, mediated by extracellular vesicles and also extracellular matrix. But we'll have to test out the causality in, in future experiment. Switching the, uh, gears a little bit, uh, perhaps uh, one of the most important hypotheses explaining the male-female differences is uh, uh, so-called um, the female protective effects. Uh, the message is very simple, and it seems that uh, stronger mutations are required for females to develop uh, autistic symptoms. In other words, uh, the thresholds are different. So we come up with an idea that maybe our CHD mutant mice uh, uh, falls somewhere in between the two different thresholds for males and females, such that uh, these heterozygous mutant mice show positive phenotype in males, but no uh, phenotypes, no 
and it's related phenotypes in females. So how do we prove this? So it could, we could uh, try a very uh, simple experiment. We make a homozygous mutant mice, and if this homozygous mutation is strong enough, both male and female will show similar uh, positive phenotypes. But unfortunately, uh, these mice are uh, lethal during embryonic development, so we couldn't really do that. So to overcome this problem, we used the trick of introducing a hybrid background into mice, and we changed the background from a plain background to a hybrid background. So we got lucky, and now this homozygous mutant mice is viable. And to my knowledge, this is the only viable homozygous CHD mutant mice in the world. And then now we can compare uh, these two <coughs> phenotypes from these two different types of uh, uh, phenotypes from heterozygous and homozygous mutant mice. We were hoping that uh, although these two uh, points are kind of uh, left shifted because of the beneficial, general beneficial effects of a hybrid uh, genetic background, but we were hoping that maybe the homozygous uh, the line uh, stay, falls onto a region where the both male and female show phenotypes. And we were hoping that the heterozygous mice show uh, uh, less severe uh, phenotypes. So these are the results. And this is an open field locomotor activity. As you can see, both male and female mice show similar decrease in the locomotion, in particular in the homozygous mice. Heterozygous mice, we don't really see much uh, difference. So the one privilege of collecting data from both males and female is that we can now use very strong statistics, two-way and over, to draw a stronger conclusion whether there are uh, uh, differences between males and females. So we tried a two-way and over analysis, and, and uh, there is a positive genotype effect, meaning that uh, males and females show similar uh, phenotypes, but there was no interaction meaning that there is no male-female differential uh, phenotypes. And then this is an uh, anxiety measuring uh, light dark test. And then here you can see a uh, decrease the uh, time spent in the light chamber. Again, measure of anxiety, and both in males and females. So the, the statistics are, again, and the same. This is a repetitive climbing. And we do see uh, similar decreases in males and females. And this is repetitive uh, self-grooming. And we see similar results. So it seems that uh, similar behaviors in male and female uh, mutants. To further understand the underlying mechanism, we tried a neural pixel a recording of the neural activity in, in multiple brain areas. And then, uh, quite interestingly, uh, neuronal firing uh, was increased both in, 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 in males compared with female in both uh, heterozygous and homozygous uh, mutant mice. And this was a kind of a disappointment. We wanted that, uh, we kind of wanted similar colors in the heterozygous mutant mice. But when you looked at the brain rhythms in, in different frequency ranges, in particular this, uh, uh, not good. Okay, low gamma uh, range uh, frequency is important for brain cognition. So as you can see here, in the heterozygous situation, okay, sorry about that. And then here we, we, we see a uh, rather um, uh, different and, 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 and male-female differential uh, uh, patterns. Uh, shown in red and blue colors, but uh, in the homozygous situation, we do see uh, similar changes in male and female, including the low gamma range. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, it seems that a stronger CHD mutation affects both male and female mice, whereas the heterozygous mutant mice show relatively minor uh, phenotypes. So, these results seem to support 
um, the idea of female protective facts, that hypothesis in, in the field of ASD, and probably um, these results could also be helpful for other psychiatric disorders with a strong male-female difference, such as schizophrenia and ADHD, and also I hope that this uh, mechanism could be helpful uh, in the future in, in the designing and developing uh, the treatments for ASD. Um, with that, I, I'd like to thank my uh, collaborators and uh, my lab members at KAIST uh, who are working very hard day and night. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kim. Do we have any questions from the audience? <clears throat> yep, I think there's one in the back. Thank you for your great talk. I'm Hazing from Jester. Uh, as I know, the autism is uh, brain uh, one of the brain developmental disorder. Doesn't it? Uh, it's meant that the uh, de brain development is have a sex difference. Male and female have uh, the other state of brain development. So, with this CIT did aid. So, do you have any any uh, opinion or any suggestion about how control or how mechanism how control the brain development between mm -hmm. the sex? Okay, if I understood uh, the question correctly, uh, the question was whether there are sex differential changes during development uh, of the brain in the CHD mutant mice. So we haven't really looked at the, the development of the stage is, and, and related changes, but we have a plan to do so. But uh, at the moment, we are uh, more interested in, in testing the, the female protective effect hypothesis and if, if then and we plan to look at the detailed mechanisms yeah, in, in future research. Thank you for your question. I think there's another question. Yeah, just, please just hand over the mic. Yes, thank you, for your, uh, thank you for your talk. I would like to ask um, if there is a difference between the survival rates of the background uh, according to the strain background of the mice, the mutant homozygous mice, and does that mean there is a different uh, protective effect, as you said, between the strains as well as between sexes? Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, the question is whether a different uh, female protective effects uh, uh, acting in different mouse strains. Yes, I believe so. And, and as it, it is the case for male and females, I think uh, within male or within female, and, and um, different strains with a different genetic background, uh, I think uh, uh, different types of a protective mechanism may uh, work. That's my personal view. No data. Okay, thank you. Let's give uh, Professor Kim another round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.